Hey, hi. Hey, I'm back. This is Charlotte, Charlotte's a Natural, and I'm talking about a project that I'm in the midst of, and this is just like sort of the next step. I already did a video where I talked about using the quick trim um, ruler and circle ruler um, for um, doing this, and I'm working again on bottle caps, which is a fig tree and company pattern, which I think we still have some of those. So um, anyway, this is the next step. So I pieced a bunch of these. And um, this is um, the Dresden plate. And then I have sewn a circle in the middle of it. And now I'm ready to turn it into a nice circle. And this is my goal. So I'm, I've got this really nice circle. And it's all very even. And it's got a finished edge because I have actually backed it with an interfacing. So she calls, this is her technique. So she calls for this interfacing. Um, so actually, we just got in Patternese, which is a product, um, a 45 inch wide product. It's very lightweight. It's a polyester rayon product. And we got it in for the Laura Heine um, collage techniques, which we have also been doing quite a few of um, in the past couple of weeks. So I brought that in and I thought, you know, it might work perfectly. So I was not sure because it's 20% rayon whether it would shrink, whether it would shrink with heat, whether it would shrink with the water. So I just threw it in the washing machine and in the dryer. And when I measured it a second time, it had shrunk um, like a quarter of an inch in the 43 inches. It had started out 43 inches and now it was 42 and three quarters. So it's not very much at all. Um, and I don't think it was a measuring error. I really think it did shrink. So it shrinks a minuscule amount. So you decide whether you're pretty sure it can't. I don't really think it would much matter. So anyway, so what I did is I cut squares um, out of the um, patternies, and now I have my um, I have my pieced uh, Dresden plate, and then um, I showed you how to cut the um, freezer paper using the pivoting ruler or tracing it from the pattern that was in the um, comes with the pattern. And so I did it in quarters. And so I have those lines that mark the halfway mark. So I'm gonna use those lines to, um, to center my circle on my dress, piece Dresden plate. Um, so I have cut this a little bit smaller because it was really efficient with the width of the interfacing that I had. And um, it actually works fine. So I've got that kind of centered on there. And now I'm going to take my freezer paper with the waxy side down. And I'm going to center that on here by following a stitch seam line in the Dresden plate. And then that actually, here are my lines here. And so I have to scoot that. That lines up there. Everything is still lined up here and that's good. I'm going to fold it back. I've got interfacing showing there. I've got interfacing showing there. I've got interfacing there. I've got interfacing there. Good. I'm good to go. So now I'm just going to put in some pins. Oops, let's see. First I'm going to put pins in that way and then I'm going to put, um, I'm going to put some pins in this long way too. Hold it on there. I could iron it with this light iron and that will hold that freezer paper which is tacky. That will hold it down slightly but once I've done it, I've already done it several times so my freezer paper is less than and I'm pinning into my circles here. Okay so I've got that. Now I'm going to pin the layers together right next to my circle to hold those together. Now I'm going to take it to the sewing machine and I am going to stitch around the outside edge of the paper template. I am not going to stitch through the paper. I'm going to use this just as the stitching guide and I'm stitching right next to it. So you can see that that fit fits perfectly inside my circles. 
except that I did it from the side. So when I pull this off, when I pull this off, I have a stitched line all the way around. And now I'm gonna trim that with a pinking shears. So I'm just gonna trim it real close, but not too close. How's that? You could also, you could also use a pinking blade in your rotary cutter. This is a, a special pinking cutter, but you can install these blades on most of the new modern um, rotary cutters they have enough space for that. So we sell those blades. So anyway, so let me cut this real quick and then I'm gonna let Kirsten speed it up so it looks faster than I actually cut. So now I have these trimmed and they're both trimmed, ready to go. And I'm gonna use the same technique that I use um, for turning the center. And that is I'm gonna slit this. So I just fold it up and I fold it in half and I can snip it with my pinking shears. And I'm gonna do it here. And then I just turn it right side out through that hole. And this really, this material was really super great for this technique because it is just crisp enough that it folds really nicely. And you can see how sheer it is. It's very sheer and lightweight. And my thought was that I was going to cut it away after I have applied it to my background fabric. So after I applique down this finished edge, so this edge is all nice and finished now, and I'm able to fold it back and press it, and it really didn't take much work at all. So once I applique that down, my options are to cut away the background fabric and to cut this out too. But I think I'm gonna wait and see how it all feels to see whether it's worth doing that. Um, anyway, so that's the next step, and I'll be back with you when I have the next step. So, thanks for joining me.